In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Switch emulator Ryu Bing, which is a fork of Ryu Jinx. Okay, so we're gonna head on over to the Ryu Bing GitHub page, which I will leave in a pinned comment below. And once you are here, you will see your download links under packages. And since I'm gonna be downloading this emulator for Windows, I'm gonna click right here for Win X64. And once you click on it, your download will start. Also, we are gonna need a program for extracting files. Now, if you are using Windows, your computer will have a built-in extractor, but I prefer to use 7-Zip. If you want 7-Zip, I will have the link to this page in the description. Now, I have moved the downloaded Ryu Bing emulator file here on my desktop. You guys can store this file wherever you like, whether that be your C drive, an external drive, it's up to you. Also, to get this emulator up and running, you're gonna need prod keys and a firmware, which I also have here on my desktop, as well as an example of a Switch ROM, which I have Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. I have an update file for that game, and I also have some DLC files. So I'll be showing you how to install all of this as well. Now for our emulator file, we need to extract this file. Now like I said, I use 7-zip, so what I wanna do is right click on the file, and if you want to use your built-in Windows extractor, then you can come right here to extract all. But for me, I'm going down to show more options, 7-zip, and I'm gonna go over to extract to Ryu Jinx. This will create a new folder containing all of our extracted files. Here's our new folder, so we can go ahead and delete the zip folder. Right click, delete, and now we are also going to need to extract our prod keys. And I am sorry guys, I cannot tell you where to get prod keys or switch ROMs, but they are not that hard to find. You can do a Google search and I'm pretty sure you will find what you are looking for. Or you can check out my Patreon page, link in the description, and I will have some videos there that will help you out with both of these. So let's right click on prod keys. I'm gonna go back down to show more options, 7-zip, and extract the prod keys. There's my new folder, so we can go ahead and delete the zip folder. And if we take a look inside that folder, you should see a file that says prod keys and title.keys. Now the version of keys I am using is 20.1.1. Now this is not the latest version, this is the last version that was released before the Switch 2 was released. I find that using the newest version of keys will give you some compatibility issues. But if you want to use the newest version, then you can. Now for the firmware file, we do not need to extract it, we can leave it in a zip format. As for my game file and my update file, they have already been extracted. Sometimes when you download your ROM, they will already be extracted. If they are in a zip format, then you will need to extract them as well. And as for your DLC files, they also remain in a zip format. Now let's go ahead and open our emulator folder. Inside of that folder, you will see a folder that says publish. Go ahead and open that. Scroll down. And here's our emulator file. Now before we open it, we're gonna go ahead and create a shortcut. So right click on it, show more options, and come down to create shortcut. And then we're just gonna drag that shortcut file to our desktop. This way, the next time you wanna open the emulator, you won't have to open the folder. Now let's go ahead and open the emulator. When you open the emulator for the first time, you're gonna get a message saying keys not found. Let's go up here to Actions, Install Keys, Install Keys dot Keys. Go ahead and locate that folder. In my case, it's on my desktop right here. And you want to select Prod dot Keys. And then Yes. Successfully installed. OK. Now we're going to install our firmware. Let's go back up to Actions, Install Firmware install firmware.xci or zip. I'm gonna locate that zip file, which is also on my desktop, right here, and yes, successfully installed, okay. And to see which firmware version you are currently running, if you look down here in the right, you will see that version. Now I'm gonna show you how to add your games to the emulator. Let's go up to options, settings, and over here where it says game directories, go ahead and click on add. 
Now you probably have a folder on your C drive or an external hard drive containing all of your Switch ROMs. You want to select that folder that contains all of your ROMs. But for this video, I just have my ROM on my desktop. So I'm already under desktop and I'm just going to hit select folder. Now you may also have a dedicated folder containing all of your DLC for all of your games as well as all of your update files for all of your games. If you do, then right here where it says auto load DLC slash updates, then you can hit add and go ahead and locate wherever you have that folder containing those files as well. And then when you come down to OK, you will see that folder load in. And it looks like I had a Hollow Knight Silk Song ROM on my desktop as well. Now, if you want to go in individually and add your DLC and update files, then what you want to do is click on the ROM so we can do Super Monkey Ball. Right click, go to Manage DLC, click on Add. Now, I know I told you guys earlier that you did not need to extract your DLC files. I was wrong. You do need to extract your DLC files. So I have went back and extracted my Super Monkey Ball DLC, which is right here. And inside of that folder, you're going to see multiple files. You want to go ahead and highlight all of your DLC and then hit open. All 33 DLC files added. OK. Then hit save and let's say you just got a new update file then you want to right click on the game and go to manage title updates add and this time i'm going to locate my super monkey ball update which is right here and that has been added okay and save now let's go back up to options settings and let's go over to graphics now everything here at default settings will work great, but if you have really bad hardware and you're getting bad performance, then you may want to come back here and change your graphics back in to OpenGL. But in most cases, Vulkan will give you the best performance. Make sure your preferred GPU is showing your graphics card if you have one. If not, you should see your integrated graphics here. Down here under resolution scale, the resolution on the left will be in handheld mode and the resolution on the right will be docked. So what you want to pay attention to is your docked. And by default, it will be set at 1080p. If you have a 1440p monitor or a 4K monitor, or if you're hooking this up to a 4K TV, then you may want to turn this up to two times. But remember, increasing the resolution will affect your performance if you have weaker hardware. So once again, if you experience performance issues or lag, then you want to turn this back down. Now let's go over to input. Now you can use an Xbox or a PS5 controller with this emulator, but I prefer to use this controller here called 8-Bit Do Ultimate 2C Switch Controller. They are fairly cheap, coming in at $30 at Walmart, Target, and Amazon, and they come in different colors. They feel great, they have motion control, rumble vibration, and hall effect sticks. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. And once the controller is paired to your PC, come to input device, and you will see that the emulator reads that controller as an actual Nintendo Switch Pro controller. And once I select it, my controller has been mapped out for me. And the same thing will happen if you are using an Xbox or a PS5 controller. The emulator will map that controller out for you. But if you want that real Switch experience, then I suggest picking up one of these controllers. Now, if you want to give this controller profile a name, then come up here where it says profile and you can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call it P1 and then hit save. Now, some games you may not be able to play using a pro controller. You will have to make the emulator think you are using Joy-Cons. I know one game that gave me this issue was Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. So if you run into this issue, then just come back here and where it says controller type, you can change this to Joy-Con pair and your controller would then read as Joy-Cons. We are done here. Come down to apply and then OK. Now we can go ahead and load up a game. If you want your games to load up in full screen, then come up here to options and you can select start games in full screen mode. If you're already in a game that's windowed, then you can press the F11 key.
So I hope this guide was helpful and if you need any additional help, then you can check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching.